So one of the common questions that I get asked on Instagram or on Facebook or on the YouTube comments is if I have any tips for how to read nonfiction books and consume information and learn, especially from professionals. And I've been meaning to create a video on my reading system, how I go from screening the books that I should be reading to actually consuming the information and then processing it to bring it all together. And an app that I've been using for a very long time is called Blinkist, which you've probably already heard of. And I was gonna do an app review about it and then go through my system. At the same time as I was planning on making this video, I got contacted by a company called Shortform. And I hadn't actually heard of these guys before and I looked into them and I was frankly pretty impressed. This video is gonna be comparing Blinkist and short form, as well as my system on how I actually go through lots of different books to learn efficiently. Now, FYI, this video is sponsored by short form. I think the first thing that's more important is to go through the system through which I take all these different possible books that I could be reading, figure out what is actually worth reading, and then the actual process of reading and then consolidating that information because that's actually arguably more important than whatever software you're using. In fact, it's a system that I was using before. I'm pretty sure Blinkist even was created, although Blinkist did actually help to, to do that. There's essentially three different stages to the, the learning process when it comes to nonfiction books. The first is about screening all the material. You need to know what material is gonna provide you what type of value, how reliable it is, and whether it's actually worth your time to invest reading on it further. In my experience, I've used Audible, I've used Blinkist, I've read the books themselves. I found that if you have something that's really worth learning, you do need to spend a bit of time on it and it's usually worth getting the actual book in a physical copy or a digital copy of the full book. Sometimes summaries just don't do it justice. You need a little bit more in-depth information. Sometimes you're looking for the references that they're using in it and it's good to just have it on hand when you need to. But to actually get to that point and know what is worth spending your time and money on, there is this huge filter system. So if you go on Audible or you Google something or you look at book recommendations, you can pick any topic and the amount of resources that you can read about it are almost endless. And another thing I've realized is that the highest reviewed books are not always the best. I've read a lot of books that were 4.5, 6, 7, eight, nine star, but then when I actually went to read it, it wasn't really for me, or the level wasn't quite right, or it wasn't really touching on a specific aspect that I was interested in, or I just didn't find that it was really suiting the problem that I wanted to try to solve. So here's the steps that we go through. Step number one is we actually need to figure out what is the problem we're trying to solve. When we're reading nonfiction books, we're essentially saying, here's some information that we wanna consume and that we wanna learn. And we know that our brain is going to consolidate that information, process it and learn from it much faster more easily and more efficiently overall when it's framed within a problem that's really relevant for us. Sure, there's nothing wrong with just getting book recommendations from your friends, but it's better to try to get a book recommendation aligned with an actual problem that you're trying to solve rather than sort of meaninglessly gaining information because actually you'll find that when you read with the view of trying to solve a problem, it becomes much easier to actually understand that material to a deeper level. And when we're thinking about the time spent on learning, sure there is a time spent on trying to find the right book, but actually the time it takes to understand the book, apply the principles and use it to actively improve our life is the thing that's by far the most time consuming. So if we can optimize that step first, purely through just figuring out what type of book I'm gonna be looking for, then that's gonna speed up the overall process. So step one, what is the problem that you have, the thing that you wanna improve that you're trying to get information on to create a solution for? Step number two, is now going through to figure out what are the possible books that we can use for this. So let's start with the Blinkist model. The first thing that we do is once we have a list of possible books and recommendations of you know things that might hit it, then we just go and look for that book. So let's look for range here. And you can see that you just get this very, very quick synopsis here. There is a who is it for? In my experience, this who is it for is sort of not that useful in fact. I often find that it's too oversimplified. So usually I just read the synopsis and then you can read now. Blinkist is arranged in blinks and each blink is essentially like a summary page. So this is page number one and you have the option to play it as an audio file. The audio experience of using Blinkist I think is a little odd to be honest, because I haven't found a good place to actually use it. So the thing is that when you're listening to something rather than reading something, 
The benefit of that is that you can be doing other things at the same time. But the thing with blinks is that they're pretty short and they're not very detailed. So what that means is that it's not really a great usage of time compared to, I think, the opportunity cost. If I have enough time, like a regular commute or something, I'd rather just listen to it like a full version on Audible or if I didn't have much time, then I'd rather just read it because I'm gonna read it faster than someone actually reading it out to me. The other thing is that each blink is very surface level. Although they do have multiple pages, so you can see that this book is broken up into 10 different blinks uh, and each blink is roughly around this size you'll find that every single book that you read has generally pretty concise blinks. They include interesting examples that make it kind of like unique and, and has like a memorable story element within the book, but they actually miss a lot of the very important details to the point where for some books, reading the blink blinks of it is a completely different experience with almost completely different take home messages from the actual book itself. And I don't know if that's because the person that's writing these blinks is just not really tuned into it so much or if they're not paying as much attention. I don't know what the process that Blinkers use, uses is to make sure, you know, quality control over their blinks. I found that if you want to use Blinkist effectively, you have to have a very low threshold for whether the book is something that you want to you want to invest in later. So for example, if you read something and there's even a couple points that you think is pretty interesting, usually that means that if you were to read the actual book, it's way more interesting and there's probably a whole chapter dedicated to that interesting point. If a blink for a book didn't have anything interesting, I would skip that book. But if the blink had at least one or two things that I thought that's pretty interesting, then I would go to either buy the book if it was something that was a little bit more technical with graphs and diagrams and maybe uh, studies and references that I want to look at or the audible if it's more just conceptual that I need to understand and there's nothing that I need to really refer to. And often I'll actually do both. I'll get the audible so that I can listen to the concepts while I'm driving or doing other things like vacuuming or doing the dishes or cooking. And then I have the book as well as, a, as you know, on hand for reference. Obviously for me, I'm really willing to invest money in things that improve my learning. So uh, I don't almost really even think about budget because I just think the knowledge is obviously just way more worth than what I'm, whatever I'm going to be paying for it. Now let's have a look at the same book range on short form and this is what it would look like. So we go on to short form and we can then search for range here and we can see same one David Epstein's range. Now some of the books on short form have audio recordings as well. Some of them don't, but most of the popular books do have audio recordings and they're of high quality and they're, they're good to listen to. Audio form for short form is a lot more useful than the audio form for Blinkist. And that's primarily because short form is way more comprehensive, much more comprehensive. In fact, I would say that Blinkist is about book summaries. Short form is more like a book guide. So not only are they actually summarizing the main point, so you can get that very quick one page summary that's essentially like a Blinkist just here. So this is the one page summary. And to be totally honest, even just the one page summary is more comprehensive and accurate than the Blinkist. The really, really, really good feature that I think is absolutely amazing when it comes to short form, they actually consolidate between multiple different texts and studies. So for example, as you're reading through, they will actually talk about other books and other references that are related to the topic you're reading about. So what that actually means is that the person that's writing these summaries is going to the extent of recommending you and adding counterpoints and additional information from other sources. So when you're reading the summary from a single book, you're actually getting the value of multiple different sources. When I read through this, I was actually pretty impressed with the points that they were adding. There were some points that when I had read this for the first time, I had thought of, and I really didn't expect that I would see it on like a publicly available mainstream app. Another really, really good thing on top of that is that the way they summarize it is not necessarily chapter by chapter, but they actually summarize it based on concepts. So it's actually a lot more logical to read through because they're not just arbitrarily blocking it off in 
the, the same way that you might read it in the order of the book. Although it does loosely follow that, they actually group them together into concepts that are more discreet. So it's actually a lot easier to follow what is going on and to track it. With Blinkist, after you've read the Blink, you don't really have a great sense for what the book was talking about. You don't really feel like you can really use that information to a huge extent. With short form, it seems like it's actually geared for you to be able to take the information, process it completely, and then actually use it. It actually serves as a guide for the book in multiple different levels. You can use the one page summary to then see, is this book worth reading? and it's a lot more accurate than using the Blinkist. Then what I recommend that you do is you get the actual book itself, the book properly. You read through the book comprehensively, you get the full level of learning necessary, you get the Audible or whatever it is that you wanna to do to completely consume the book and process all that information. And then you come back to the short form and you can use the in-depth summary. So you can see on the side here, there's a full summary and through here, it actually divides it into a more specific, more in-depth summary of each of the major points, as well as more additional uh, information and uh, you know additional readings that you can then start exploring as well. So this actually serves as a really great way of recounting all the information from before, looking at all the different highlights, seeing the main points. It takes a lot of the load off, especially for people that want to use a resource like Audible. One of the paranoias about Audible is that if you're listening to something and you're not in a position where you can write notes on it, what if you forget it? You might hear something that's really important. Sometimes it's not viable to like pull over onto the side of the road, take out your phone and write a quick note on it. Short form summaries are comprehensive enough that chances are anything interesting that you hear in the audio book will probably already be noted here. So here you can see that we've actually got exercises at the end of that particular concept on what we can do with those learning points. And this is really, really fantastic because this is actually going way beyond what the book is already setting up. The book in itself is not giving you these recommendations. This is the person reviewing the book, making these recommendations for themselves. They're basically creating a course out of the book that you're reading. That is absolutely next level, completely beyond what I expected. Just, you know, what I considered as a book summary app to be doing but it's definitely way more than that. And the final thing is that there are also a few user experience advantages from short form that I personally really appreciate. And this is actually something that I makes me feel like the people that were behind this app really knew what they were doing and they had attention to detail on the learning experience. If you've seen some of my other videos on how to read more efficiently, is to actually just make it easier for your eye to navigate the page. Short form has margin adjustment on it as well. So for me, I would like to read it like that. And that's gonna make it easier for my eye to traverse it and it's less tiring and it helps you focus a little bit more. They also have dark mode built into it so that it doesn't look like you're staring into a light bulb for hours on end. These are controls that are not available on Blinkist. You can only just change the font size on something like Blinkist. So you can see these summaries are really, really long. Like this is just a single section summary for like essentially one major concept and it's already more comprehensive than pretty much the entire Blink for the whole book on Blinkist. All right, now let's look at another example, Atomic Habits by James Clear, a great book on habits that I recommend. Here it is on Blinkist. Again, here's a synopsis, the who is it for, for whoever needs to read that. We look at the Blink, so you can see it's just on the final summary already because I've already finished that. Really, really concise, really, really short. I didn't actually read the Blinkist first for Atomic Habits. I actually read the book first and then I listened to the Audible and then I actually went on Blinkist to just compare to see how good the summary was. I was pretty disappointed in how brief the summary was and I just really felt like a lot of the most important points were taken out. It's almost not even really like a summary. It's just so superficial here. There could be some really, really important points and you might think it's not worth investing in it because it takes up only just like one sentence on the entire Blinkist. However, that sentence could be like a whole chapter in the book, which in this case it actually was. Let's look at the same thing on short form, Atomic Habits. We get a little bit more of a synopsis there. We can read this book. And again, here's that one page summary. You can already see that the one page summary on this is a lot easier to read. It's a lot easier to track what the concepts are. So you can see already that one page summary, more comprehensive, easier to follow, more structured. It's almost just like a written essay about the book. You'd get an idea about whether you want to invest in this book. You'd go, you'd read about it, and then you're coming back here to review the highlights, to consolidate that information, to use as further reference, and you can do the exercises as well. So here we've got the summary on chapter two. 
broken down into its concepts. Again, really comprehensive. This does cover all of the main points that were in the chapter. I will be canceling my Blinkist subscription after five years of using it and I will be using short form from now on. As part of this whole like YouTube sponsorship thing, they uh, gave me this document that has like some of their ideas for what they're working on right now that are coming up in the near future. And I'm not allowed to tell you what those things are. It's just another level. Like it is game changingly another level to the point where it can potentially make your overall learning experience through books like five, six times faster. The overall size of the library in short form is smaller than Blinkist. Like Blinkist has got a lot of different books, like nine, eight out of 10 books that I want to read. There will be something on Blinkist. On short form, I would just estimate that it's probably closer to like six out of 10, six and a half out of 10. But the good thing is that you can actually, as a community, any subscriber can vote for the next books that they should work on. They release a new guide or a new book every single week. Chances are the popular things will actually get covered relatively efficiently. One book that I, uh, in particular, that I wanted to look for to do a comparison for was called Think Again by Adam Grant. So this book is on Blinkist, as you can see. Uh, it's a really, really good book on uh, cognitive biases. I'll add this to my library so that we can have a look through that. But this is not available on short form at the time of recording this video. However, funnily enough, for this particular book, the Blink is actually so brief and goes through so little of what I think is some of the most important points that it almost isn't worth going through this anyway. It would have been better to see if this book is worth reading just by reading like Amazon reviews instead because I personally believe that the blink on this doesn't actually really do it justice. Having said that, Short Forms Library is still pretty extensive. You can see these are some of the ones that they've been releasing recently. They cover a range of different genres. They cover a range of different topics. I would say that if you're interested in especially things to do with personal development, business, marketing, habit building, there's even the few things that are there in terms of just like pure learning, then this is actually going to be a really, really good resource for you. So if you're interested in using this system of scoping out the material and screening it using software like this, and then going in with either something like Audible or buying the book directly, I would strongly recommend using short form. If you're interested in this, you can get a free five day trial by using my special link shortform.com slash Justin Sung, or you can just check the link in the description below. And if you do end up signing up through my link, then you'll get an additional 20% off an annual subscription if you do choose to keep going after the end of your trial. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions about this, then leave a comment down below. If you have any apps or any softwares or any system that you want me to talk about that's not directly related to necessarily learning, but just in productivity or time management in general, then feel free to leave a suggestion as well. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.